If you've been on the internet at any point in the last 10 or 15 years or so, I'm sure you've at least heard of LSD Dream Emulator. Weird game, subject of many a reaction vid. Oh, Japan is so kooky and weird, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, the game was created by lead designer Asamu Sato, who started his career as a musician and then moved into digital art and had a brief foray into making video games throughout the 90s. LSD was released for the PS1, but before that, he and his team developed a couple of adventure games for PC. Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Nao, and Eastern Mind 2, Middle Heaven Chu Tang. The first game, The Lost Souls of Tong Nao, got a Western release through publisher Sony ImageSoft in 1995, but the second game was left in Japan, until 2020 when it finally received an English fan translation. Now we can play both games in the Eastern Mind duology. And that's what I'm going to do, so strap in as we explore two lost PC games from the creator of LSD Dream Emulator. It's really surprising that Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Nao even got an official English release. But the mid-90s were an experimental time in game development. Creators were shifting from 2D to 3D and still trying to figure out how to design games with that extra dimension of space. So there are a lot of oddities out there, and Eastern Mind is probably one of the most far out. Before we dig in, I want to give a special thanks to the dungeon connoisseurs and dungeon architects who support this channel on Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron, click the link in the description below. You'll get to watch videos a day or two before they're public on YouTube, and sometimes read posts where I bitch about trying to finish videos on time. All of that for a dollar a month. Five dollars or more gets your name in future videos like these fine folks. Think about it. Anyway. Eastern Mind assaults you with bizarre images, colors, and creatures right from the get-go. As I mentioned in the intro, Osamu Sato started his career as an artist, not a game designer. So he mustered all the weirdness and originality of his art into Eastern Mind. Players who are familiar with LSD Dream Emulator may have a little bit of an idea of what to expect, but as much as I love the simplistic polygons of the PS1 era, after seeing Eastern Mind in action, they just don't do the art and vision of Osamu Sato justice. The character designs in Eastern Mind are all strange, colorful, and inventive. They have aspects that are familiar, like the twin dragons outside the Palace of Dreaming, or Zen, the octopus-like creature who lives inside this ice wall. But then there are characters made up of musical instruments, or who are just amalgamations of shapes. You never know what you're going to run into next. For example, this little guy pops up saying, fun, 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 fun over and over again. I guarantee this will get stuck in your head, and probably come close to driving you insane. He gives you cryptic hints about certain puzzles, or cautions you about what to be on the lookout for in specific areas. The music goes hand in hand with the strange visuals. The variety on display here is something to behold. There are the expected, at least from an Osamu Sato joint, zany, freak-out beats, but then there are more subtle and mysterious tracks. One of my personal favorites is the one that plays while you're on the lake in the land of dreaming. There are a lot of songs too, all composed by Osamu Sato himself, and they often change within areas. Hell, they can change depending on what direction you're facing, so you're never gonna get bored. If anything, the constantly shifting soundscape might end up being overwhelming for some people, but that may just be the point. So what the hell is going on in Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Now? There actually is a story to follow here. You take the role of a man named Rin, who wakes up one morning to find out he doesn't have a soul anymore. Bummer. Turns out this happens once a year. People lose their souls. The island of Tong Now in the east devours human souls, leaving the soulless people in a weakened state where they'll eventually die of emptiness. 
So Rin decides to head to Tang now to regain his soul. He meets up with a being named Yashiro, who gives Rin a temporary soul that will last for 49 days. Oddly specific, but don't worry, this is just a plot point. There's no timer or anything like that related to gameplay. After that, Rin sets sail for the island of Tang now. And the first thing you'll be greeted by is a giant green face. I'm just gonna let this image sink in for a second. You can rotate this cue ball around and click on different parts of it to travel inside. The head connects to different areas of Tong Nao and acts as a hub of sorts. It's also modeled after Osamu Sato himself, the creator of the game. Ugh. You're free to travel around and explore as you see fit, but the first thing you need to do in this game is die. It turns out death isn't the end in Eastern Mind. You'll be resurrected as a new character. There are nine different characters in the game, each with their own quests and objectives. The way you create a new character is by rearranging these six pieces of a face into different combinations. There are two different eyes, two noses, and two mouths. So choosing, for example, the left eye, right nose, and right mouth will create one character. And then choosing the right eye, right nose, and left mouth will make another character. Once you create a new character, you'll be introduced to them, and then transported back to Tang Nao to play as them and complete their quest. Some quests are more involved than others, like Sha, who needs to go around to different parts of the world and uncover four musical instruments, or Byo, who needs to collect the eyeball of dreaming. But others are very short, like Zen, our octopus buddy from earlier, who's stuck in an ice wall for their entire quest. Or Jin, whose creation isn't even successful. <laughs> All of these quests, however long or short, feed into the main story though. And despite the absurdity of the visuals and the initial bewilderment you feel when you start up the game, there is a logic here that begins to reveal itself the more you play. When you first start, nothing makes sense, and everything feels overwhelming, because it seems like there's no rhyme or reason to anything that's happening. I mean, you're greeted by a big green face, you can travel inside it through its cheeks and ears. I mean, what the actual f but take your time and explore, let yourself really sink into this world, and everything will become clear. I'm not kidding either, the structure and logic in this game does make itself apparent. And that moment when the pieces start to fit together for you creates such a satisfying feeling. The moment where it came together for me was after I tried to enter the Palace of Dreaming and was blocked by these twin dragons, An and Un. Before they let you enter the palace, you need to answer their question. What wakes King Yao from his sleep? Now, at this point, you probably don't even know who or what a King Gao even is. One of the first items you can find inside a chest is a book of Tong Nao. It's a compendium of all the places, characters, and lore of this world. There are some hints to certain puzzles inside the book, and it's an indispensable item for figuring out the game. You keep all of your items in a little pouch in the bottom right corner of the screen called a furoshiki, which can be opened at any time. Opening the book and looking up the entry for King Gao doesn't reveal any info on what wakes him from his sleep. Beaten and unable to answer the question, I tried the only answer I could think of. Got him. Anyway, that didn't work. I left the land of dreaming and wandered some more. Eventually, I found myself in the gold palace in the land of desire. There's a character lying on a table, or more like an altar, at the front of the hall here, but there was no way to interact with them. I bumbled around and eventually found out that you could click on the pillars at the side of the hall. Some would move and reveal secret rooms. Others would transport you to new places. As I fiddled around, I stumbled across a golden flower. Then I learned that if I used the golden flower on the character in the gold hall, I could speak to it. When I did that, he introduced himself as King Gao. And boom, then I had the answer to the dragon's question, the golden flower. After this, the logic of the game started to click for me. There are plenty of other moments like this across the playthrough, and though it seems bewildering at first, it's actually not a very difficult game to figure out, and I loved it for that. It felt satisfying to play through and make it to the end. I like really weird, bizarre games that take me out of my comfort zone, but what I really appreciate is when games can leave you with that feeling, but then slowly reveal their internal logic and structure to you, so you can actually play and enjoy them. I'm not really a fan of weirdness just for weirdness sake, is what I'm saying. There are five realms in Eastern Mind. The Land of Dreaming, the Land of Desire, the Land of Time, the Land of Life, 
and the central mountain of Tongnao. You access each of them through different parts of the green face, but there are also shortcuts scattered throughout each of the lands that connects to other parts. There's also a hidden phantom marketplace that has some items and a trading minigame that's optional. There's a lot of optional stuff in the game actually, like this mouth wall that you can feast with if you find a pair of chopsticks, or this spinning room of immortality where you'll be given a choice of different drinks, and one of them is poison that will kill you. There are several traps in the game that can kill you, but there are a few items that can protect you, and death isn't really too much of a hindrance as you'll just be resurrected and you'll be able to create the same character again if you didn't complete their mission yet. But some of the more creative ways you can get killed include getting burned to death, or drinking poison like I mentioned, or getting crushed by this giant spiked ball while traveling through the green man's ear canal, and what, what kind of sentence is that? This is just the kind of shit you'll deal with in Eastern Mind, and its twisted logic will start to shape your own perception. And before you know it, you're saying things to yourself like, okay, I picked up that ant and threw it in the face of the King of Life, so he started sneezing, which allowed me to enter his mouth portal to gain access to the roots of the Tree of Life and collect the Eyeball of Dreaming. Well, cross that off the to-do list. So, rubs hands together, what's next? There are some characters you'll run across who are involved in little side quests, but many of them are just there to be weird little distractions and flesh out the world. All of them have entries in the Tongnao book in your inventory, so you can find out who they are, what their purpose is, and what their likes and dislikes are. They really populated this world with life and lore for you to get lost in beyond the main objectives of the game. Honestly, the main quest involving the nine playable characters is pretty straightforward and you'll likely be able to complete the game in about 4 or 5 hours. But if you want to look around for more characters and events, there's a few more hours of content here. I'm going to talk about the ending now, so if you don't want any spoilers, skip to this time. Okay, so after completing each character's quest, you'll collect their nameplate, and usually some other item, but not every character has an item. When you finish all of the other characters, you can then resurrect as Rin again to complete his search for his lost soul. Use the character nameplates to unseal the path to the central mountain, and you'll then be tasked with finding the five elemental Magatama, these little comma-shaped beads that you'll probably recognize if you've ever played Persona or some other Shin Megami Tensei game. Collecting four of them will allow you to take the katana of five forces from the steps leading to the top of the mountain. The last the last Magatama is trapped inside a shrine, enclosed in this bundle of energy. Using the sword will break the energy field, allowing Rin to collect it. Turns out the Magatama were fragments of Rin's soul, and now that they've been reunited, Rin's soul returns to him. At the end, Togyo, the king of Tongnao, appears. He says that Tongnao was originally an island of purification, not a place where souls were meant to be devoured. But the other kings trapped Togyo and wanted to use human souls because of their inherent power. Now that the original king is back, Tongnao will return to being a place of purification and Rin can leave the island and go back home. Overall, I thought Eastern Mind The Lost Souls of Tongnao was a strange and satisfying game that I recommend to adventure game fans or people who just like quirky games and art styles. It's on the easy side once you wrap your head around its logic, and it's just a really quirky and fun world to explore. But we're not done yet. A year after this game's release, Sato and his team came back with a sequel. Eastern Mind 2 Middle Heaven Chu Tang was released in 1995 for PC exclusively in Japan, and it remained that way for 25 years until a 4chan expedition led to the game getting a fan translation in English. So this is something to get excited for, a lost PC game from the creator of the excellent Eastern Mind and the widely beloved LSD Dream Emulator. It must be something so weird and bizarre for Western publishers to not want to touch it back in the day, right? Well, when you start up a new game in Chu Tang, you're greeted by another face. This one is a little less unsettling than the face of Sato in Tong Nao. This is Nan Shu, the guardian of Chu Tang, which is a world consisting of the palaces of the sun, moon, and stars. Nan Shu was just doing his duty, minding his own business, when he was assaulted by the supreme darkness, Chui Hei, and dude got rocked so hard his face exploded, and the pieces were scattered throughout the lands of Chu Tang. And who should happen to come across Nan Shu's left eye and ears? Why, none other than Rin, on his way back from Tong Nao. So once again, we find ourselves playing as Rin. The goal this time is to travel the palaces of Chu Tang and collect the pieces of Nan Shu's face, so the supreme darkness can be banished. So we've got the same wacky art style and a plethora of new characters, on top of a slightly darker storyline. Chu Tang also runs a bit smoother than the first game, and there are more transition animations and a greater use of 3D assets overall. 
As much as I like the music in Tong Now, Chu Tang's soundtrack feels more coherent and closer to what Sato would end up creating with the excellent Dream Emulator soundtrack. The background music to the intro area, The Milky Way, has a funky bassline melody that I really dug. And there's this one ethereal track in the Star Palace where a bird is supposed to be singing to you that's just soaring. The track, not the bird. There's nothing else to this scene, and nothing you need to do, but I just stayed here listening to this song because it's so good. All of these aspects are improvements over the first game, so this must be a lost masterpiece, right? Well, in the gameplay department, Chu Tang is much more straightforward than the previous game. The structure of the world is more consistent, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but then it's just kind of samey. The areas are small for the most part, and are usually circular in their layouts, so you just loop around on yourself. And the characters you meet are even more forthright when it comes to telling you what items you need and how to solve puzzles. And usually then it just comes down to wandering around until you find the right items, and then backtracking to the places where you need to use them. This is essentially how Tong Now worked too, and most adventure games and games with puzzles in general work. But Tong Now made these expeditions more interesting with its variety of landscapes and the variation in the structure of its worlds. In Chu Tang, you just wander in circles, and you have to keep opening your map to make sure you haven't walked past where you need to go, because everything looks the same. At least they gave you a map. The Star Palace is the worst offender, and it's the first major area that you visit. A series of 28 rooms, all laid out in a circle, that you just need to walk through and talk to all the NPCs as you pass each room. And there are a few interesting ones, but most of them will just tell you exactly what you need to find and what you need to do to progress. Then it's just a matter of slogging through the area to track down the right items. There's a spot where you have to unlock a chest with a key, but then there's just a room with three keys to choose from. One of them opens the chest, and it's pretty obvious which one it is because it's the most ornate. But you can only take one at a time and need to return it to take a new one. So if you happen to choose the wrong key, you'd go to the chest room, use it, find out it's not the right one. Then you need to wander back to the key room, put the wrong key back, take the right one, then go all the way back to the chest room again. I don't know, the whole design here just feels so much lazier. There are some other things added to this game that feel like they were just put there to slow you down and block your progress. Like these black amoeba type creatures that attack you and obscure your vision. They usually appear before puzzles that you need to complete to progress to new areas, and the only way to clear them is by using a mine item. You'll usually find these as you go through the areas, but if you encounter the amoebas and didn't find a mine yet, you'll just have to keep wandering around until you find one. It just feels like artificial padding, and delays the satisfaction of solving a puzzle or using a key item to move forward. The first game had this organic feeling to it, where you wandered around these strange areas and it felt really satisfying to stumble across items that you didn't know the uses for and have to put together things for yourself, like, oh, hey, I need to use this here, or, oh, I figured this out, now I can go back to this place and do this, or whatever. In Chu Tang, it all feels very by the numbers, and it's just not as engaging. There's not that feeling of discovery and magic to it. It's boring, actually. What's supposed to be alien and surreal ends up feeling mundane and ordinary because of how often you need to backtrack and slog through areas. And the structure of it all is simplified so much that there's nothing here to really figure out with exploration. Just wander these same looking corridors. There are also more instances where you can die, and they've done away with the resurrection mechanic from the last game. So if you die, you just get a game over and have to load a previous save. So it just adds frustration on top of monotony. It's a real letdown. I know the first game didn't sell all that well, and that's probably the number one reason why the sequel wasn't released in the West, but I could also easily see the bland design of Chu Tang being a contributing factor. So, no, this is not the lost masterpiece that we were hoping for. It's honestly boring. Bursting with visual creativity and loads of lore for its world, and an excellent soundtrack, that's undeniable. But it's just such a monotonous playthrough. All of the brilliance the first game had at slowly revealing its inner workings to you is completely completely out the window in Chu Tang. I'd say give it a look if you really enjoyed the first game, but honestly, Tang Nao is the only one that's worth playing to the end. So, Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tang Nao is a forgotten classic that is well worth your time. 
If you're a fan of adventure games or a fan of LSD Dream Emulator and want to see another example of Osamu Sato's weird take on game design, then definitely play it. But avoid Chu Tang. It's got the same coat of paint with some slightly nicer accessories, but under the hood is a jalopy engine that will just barely get you where you're wanting to go. I hope that analogy wasn't, uh, wasn't too much. It felt right when I wrote it. I don't know now. Fuck, am I still talking? Whatever, I'll just keep all this in. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, smash that thumbs up, leave a comment, obliterate that subscribe button, flick the bell to get notifications or whatever the hell it does. Obligatory end video YouTuber stuff. There are links to places you can download both of these games that have them working on modern systems in the description below. And we have the website, The Collection Chamber to thank for that. There are also links to my Twitter and Patreon. Consider supporting this channel and what I do here if you're so inclined, but really, you just being you and being wherever you are watching this video right now is more than enough. Speaking of enough, I've dragged out this end segment long enough. So, Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Nao. Check it out. Eastern Mind 2, Middle Heaven Chu Tang. Meh. And Dungeon Chill. Out. <laughs>